Booming shale gas production has been a boon for the US economy, but can the bonanza continue? And what are its implications for the environment and for trade? Who better to answer such questions than Robert D. Hormatz, the US Undersecretary for Economic Growth, Energy and the Environment? Mr. Hormatz, thank you for joining us at INSEAD Knowledge. What do you think? Can this bonanza continue? I think prices for natural gas will continue to stay low relative to the world price for natural gas. I suspect they will continue low for a while, but begin to pick up as demand picks up, as various uh, producers of power substitute natural gas for other sources of power generation, such as coal, then I think demand will, will pick up uh, and the price will pick up as well. So it probably won't stay quite as low as it is today. And we will begin to export. We've had two uh, LNG export projects approved. One has been approved a little while ago, another was approved recently. There's a prospect for perhaps a few more to be approved, which will also add to demand. But I do not expect it to go up dramatically, and I do not expect it to go up nearly as much as we've seen in other parts of the world. So you would expect that shale gas will continue to fuel the U.S. economic recovery? I think shale gas will continue to be an important part of American economic recovery. There are really two things at play here. One is shale gas production is up, which means we have greater availability and lower prices than we had a few years ago. We've also seen an increase in uh, what's known as tight oil, which is oil that comes from Montana and uh, North Dakota, which uses similar techniques of drilling and then horizontal drilling. And in addition, we've seen something quite striking as well, and that is a much greater utilization of efficient uh, ways of, of utilizing energy in terms of efficient auto standards, in terms of more efficient buildings. So the efficiency of the American power generation sector and the overall utilization of energy in the United States has also contributed to lower prices and less use of fuel. For instance, we used to be, five years ago, 60 percent dependent on imported oil. Now we're only 40 percent. What about the environmental issues posed by shale gas production? Well, there are environmental issues, to be sure. And one of the things that we have placed a great deal of emphasis on in the United States is making sure that there are very high environmental standards to avoid accidents or to avoid problems uh, that could do two things. One could cause popular opinion in favor of shale gas to turn against it. And the other, of course, is we don't want any kind of major difficulty which would cause problems for local communities that are now quite receptive, by and large, not all, but by and large, to more utilization of shale gas. And in terms of the way the wells are produced, there's a lot of drilling, but there's a lot of horizontal drilling as well. So we've gotten a lot of uh, communities that are quite happy with including more shale gas uh, production, more fracking, but we don't want to do anything that causes them to have second thoughts about inviting the companies into those communities to do this sort of thing. The technology needed for clean fracking is one of the strengths of the U.S. energy industry. In addition to exporting the gas, you can also export the technology. Is this a direction that you expect to be heading in? Yes. We are very actively engaged in working with other countries, including China, Poland, many other parts of the world, to help them to uh, produce uh, natural gas, shale gas. Uh, and we have an interest in greater diversification of energy supplies around the world and to the extent countries can utilize natural gas to take pressure off demand for coal, it helps deal mm -hmm. with climate change and CO2 emissions and greenhouse gas emissions. So we have a very cooperative program with many other countries to help them and American companies are highly advanced in this process, do have the technology. We want to be sure, A, that the technology is available to others, but B, that there's sufficient protection of trade secrets and intellectual property so that if we do have our companies become active abroad, their technology is not uh, pirated. Uh, that's one key area. But it's also very important to recognize that 
we have an advantage in the United States in as much as we have a very long history of geological information gathering. We know a lot about the substrata of energy in the United States, so we have a much better idea than some countries do as to where to drill and what the challenges are going to be. Many other countries don't have that geological information history, so a lot of work needs to be done to compile the information so that when a company goes in, it has sufficient information to bring the right equipment, to bring the right technology, and to do the right sort of drilling. So there's a lot of preliminary work that needs to be done before the actual drilling takes place. And finally, is it now the time for the United States to develop a new energy policy? I think in the United States we tend to have a number of energy policies. One policy that we've had going back for really decades is uh, the series of regulations we have on uh, dealing with, for instance, um, air pollution that comes out of energy production and, and other things. Uh, there's a lot of work that's been done on that. We have a number of regulatory agencies that are looking into ensuring that this new fracking or shale gas production is done in an environmentally sound way. Um, and we have a whole set of efficiency measures that have put, been put into our system over time for automobiles, for, uh, for buildings, for electronic appliances. That's one part of our energy policy. A second part, of course, is that we're now uh, developing these new technologies of the future. So we've got a whole range of policies to ensure that there is sufficient support for a good environment, a uh, good regulatory environment in particular for fracking or, or shale. We also have now uh, an effort to increase production of nuclear power in the United States. There are a number of countries that are retreating from the production of nuclear power. We're not. We're actually increasing our emphasis on nuclear power in certain parts of the country. We're increasing offshore drilling in the United States. We had a problem in the Gulf of Mexico that now is behind us and we're in a careful, environmentally responsible way allowing more offshore drilling. So we have really a, what we call an all of the above strategy and in particular we're focusing on new technologies for wind and solar and, and battery technology because one thing we don't want, we don't want is the low price of gas to derail the process of developing alternative energies that don't uh, uh, um, produce the CO2 emissions or the greenhouse gas emissions that uh, we want to avoid in our own country and we want to work with other countries to avoid the same thing. So we look at this as an opportunity to have a multiplicity of energy policies to deal with the various facets of the energy picture in the United States. But one other point that I think is useful to make, and that is there's an argument around the world that well, because the Americans are less dependent on imported oil, which we are, and we're less dependent certainly on natural gas, we used to get a lot from Qatar in particular, a lot of that is going to Europe now and, and Asia, that because we're less dependent, we're going to be less engaged in the global energy picture. And I think that is really uh, a, a, a misjudgment that people and the press and elsewhere make that we're going to pull back. In fact, we really want to have an active energy diplomacy. We want to work with other countries, Europe and other countries, to help them diversify their sourcing of energy, diversify the kinds of energy products that they use to produce power in their own countries. So they're not wholly dependent or heavily dependent on any one source. We want more diversification. Uh, alternative pipelines, alternative sources, alternative uh, types of energy. So we want to have an active policy. We want to reach out to them, particularly to countries that are finding new energy, uh, Mozambique, Tanzania, Uganda, many countries in West Africa, to help them develop uh, programs so that energy governance, how they determine the bidding on various blocks, how they utilize the, uh, the financing uh, of the energy uh, process, what do they, how do they use the money that they get from the energy, how do they do all these things in a, in, a, in a responsible way that contributes to their development and contributes to their uh, opportunities for larger numbers of citizens rather than be uh, held by only a narrow group. 
And the third thing we want to do is work with them to help them to develop uh, a number of these new technologies in an environmentally responsible way. So we see the opportunities that we have at home to strengthen our energy diplomacy, to have a more active energy diplomacy so that we're far from pulling back. We actually want to use what we've learned, the skills we've learned, the regulatory experience that we have in the United States, the opportunities we have to have a, a greater degree of engagement with countries around the world, both producers and consumers, so that we have a global energy policy. Because after all, if oil prices go up elsewhere in the world, they have an effect on prices in the United States. It's one large market. If there's a disruption in supplies in any one country or group of countries, it disrupts uh, both the energy market, which pushes prices up in the United States, but it also is disruptive of economies around the world, and economies around the world are big markets for American products. So we want a more internationalized effort by the United States to work with other countries, and we're going to conduct a very robust and constructive energy diplomacy to work with a wide range of countries over the next several months and years. Thank you very much, Robert D. Holmes, U.S. Undersecretary for Economic Growth, Energy and the Environment, for joining us in Sea of Knowledge. Thanks. Okay.